This is the IA Podcast, where you can leave your worries at the door and come in and enjoy the glue factory. Today on the podcast, yeah, we're a little bit late, but you know, we have a lot to talk about, especially a lot of Guild Wars 2 news. I get to talk about how I played Firewatch and a couple of other things, so definitely stick around. This is going to be a pretty awesome one because we also have an awesome, awesome crew. Also, awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Awesome! Hello and welcome to another episode of the Insomniac Synonymous podcast. Today is April the 26th. My name is Brian. I am your host. I am joined along some awesome people today. We have Schrodinger's cat. Take a shot. We need to point out that Brian says awesome too much, and it's part of the new IA drinking game. Every time he says awesome, take a shot. Yes. I'm true. Take we have, a shot. We have um, Dude Run. God damn it. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, have Fire Tits Dude McGee. Run. We have Fire Tits hang, McGee. Hang on. No, hang on. I, I don't know if I could compete <laughs> with uh, Shro there. I, I, I don't know if I can. <laughs> This isn't a competition, it's a friendly stomping of all of you. <laughs> a friendly stomp. That sounds so um, not violent or non-threatening at all. And we have Ghost of the 13th. I, I clearly connected into the wrong room here. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Good time. Or was so, it the really right now. room? Or was it just where you needed to be? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I for a second there, I thought you were playing like the the Twilight Zone theme, and I'm like, where is he going with that? That's not at the Twilight Zone theme. Like seriously, I was so confused there for a second. Of course, second. it's not the Twilight Zone theme because it's not you're the really, Twilight Zone theme. <laughs> I'm actually really sad that apparently this April first for April Fool's Day. At my old school, Muskingum University, um, somebody walked into my friend and math professor's class in a bright yellow raincoat and, you know, the boots and everything with a saxophone just randomly in the middle of class and just busted Careless Whisper out, which is that song, if you didn't know, (laughs) and did that for like a few verses and then just like moonwalked back out of the room (laughs) and went down the hallway. I'm like, I missed this? I missed this? I'm so sad right now. Like, I feel like somebody would have had to record that. Like, there has to be some kind of a video of that. Yeah, somebody should have a vine of that or something somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. You should find out, man. That would be awesome. I'd like to see that. That sounds epic. So what have you guys been up to for the past gaming week? Wait, wait, wait. Did we actually introduce Dude? Yeah, he did. Said, yeah, we did. Hold on. He said, "Hold on." That was <laughs> yeah, that that's was true. Thing. That was his introduction. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to get this to play. I can't feel my penis. <laughs> but I kept missing the play button. <laughs> Gotta hold that closer to the microphone next well, there, time. But I still heard it. Go. Redemption. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, what have you guys been up to? Anything new? I mean, you know, since the last time we recorded. Uh. Where should I start? <laughs> I almost finished Hot Off a Boyfriend. Oh, no, I can't awesome. believe I that game you've is so long. Yeah, I mean, you've only replayed it like what, like 4,500,000 times? 43 episodes, and I'm not done with it apparently because I missed an ending and I need to go back and get it. Yeah, so like one honestly, more episode like... of Hot Off a Boyfriend, and that's it. Okay, but, to, yeah, almost... to get through like an entire playthrough of this bird pigeon simulating of fellatio game like how long does it take from start to finish uh each ending i would say if you're reading everything aloud maybe 40 minutes okay so it's a fairly short game then because pretty short that, well, okay there's multiple endings so so that's why it kind of gives you that replayability of stuff okay yeah. all right yeah nice the last nice. ending i went for though was fucking forever <sighs> oh, did was it really, eh? Mm. Yeah, there see, was now, so much shit going on. <laughs> yeah, see, I feel like lately now it's like I really don't, I can't really. 
be bothered to do like the whole multiple endings thing. So I really like those kind of games where like if it's 40 minutes, but it's, you know, oh, you got to play multiple times. I actually like it because I can be like, okay, I'm just going to play it once and then move on to something else. So that's kind of my whole thing. I don't know. When I was younger, I definitely could do like a lot of those things. But now it's just like, dude, there's like so many games out there. Not enough time. But hey, it's your job. So, you know, you're able to to kind of do this, which is honestly pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, it's my job and stuff. I'm getting my, uh, lots of money. Lots of money. <laughs> all the fame, all the money. What is this money? <laughs> God. Damn it. Uh, I want, uh, dang it. An adult I'm broke and I forgot. Yeah, an adult and give me money. <laughs> I'm too poor for games now. Good times, yeah. Yeah, anybody else um, been up to anything interesting? Not really. Well, we can talk about the fact that uh, we missed 420. We did. I, hey, you guys may have missed it, but hey. Son of a bitch. We had like a whole big thing right like a block away. There's like sort of like a um, celebration square type of thing. It's called Dundas Square and a whole bunch of people are just out there celebrating 420. It was pretty awesome. It's good say, stuff. Say, what's the name of that square again? It's called Dundas Square. Oh, meaning you're Dundas. Got it. Exactly. During exactly. 420. What? We still need to talk about that time you came into the team speak like two, three weeks ago and appeared to be stoned off your ass while drunk to hell. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was times. amazing. Was that Best about? times ever. That's pretty much every Saturday, though. But sometimes, yeah. you know, sometimes I just I don't make it as far as team speak. So that was a special occasion. <laughs> I honestly, yeah, no, that was a, that was one of those Saturdays where, like, usually I'm pretty good about not going on team speak if I'm like totally like you know trashed. But that Saturday, like, I did like all the text messagings, all the Facebook messages and like all the team speak stuff. So yeah, it was, um, it was pretty interesting, you know, just waking up the next day and being like, huh, I wrote that. Okay. <laughs> so did you get a little ding sound that said Xbox achievement crossfaded? <laughs> pretty much. Eh? <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Hey, uh, we had the rocket league free weekend. So that was cool. True. I finally got to try out Rocket League with a friend of mine, and it was amazing to the point where we actually ended up getting it. And um, what can I say? Shro, yeah, man. It's um, it's a good game. And Rocket League is going to cause me to have a stroke one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it really sounds like it every time you're playing that game. It's like there's never a time when you're playing that game, and I, and I hear you say anything that sounds remotely close to you having a fun time. <laughs> you you sound like the last time I heard you and you were going on about it. You sounded like an incoherent ninety year old man that popped one too many Viagra. <laughs> exactly. I want to know why you know what that sounds like. Do you want to know? Well, the reason is because before I joined the military, I actually worked at an elderly care home, and I actually prepared food for elderly people. And when I go into the rooms and serve the food to these elderly jackasses you know there's things that cannot be unseen that the nurses are trying to handle and <laughs> all the bad stuff happens always at the elderly care homes old always. man penis and the mashed potatoes <laughs> i mean it's just well no it wasn't okay so first it wasn't the mashed potatoes second yes he popped one too many viagra the three it was the green peas not the fucking potatoes oh boy yeah, because the potatoes were already fucking, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so that's my ghost story. Cool, cool. I actually, speaking not of not things not. fucking, not so not. I work at a kennel. Oh, God, this is actually disturbingly on point. Um, So I work at a kennel, we do daycare, and there are these two elderly dogs, like both, you know, over 10 years old. And... The, the guys neutered, the female spayed. Things aren't normally supposed to work this well still, and got there for 
they totally fucked, did it, got stuck together and everything, tied the knot. And we learned how many of my coworkers had no idea how dogs actually did the dirty. Oh my god, what are they doing? I'm like, oh my god, my, my manager's oh, gonna kill me, the dog's oh, fucked in day camp. <laughs> wait, 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 you mean like how old were they? Like, uh, like what, like eight or five? Like, the people working there, that they had no idea what they were doing. No, 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 I, I don't know if you understand exactly what I said. My coworkers are all in at least, you know, the 20-something age range. But when dogs do the nasty, when the guide doggy gets it in all the way, it gets stuck. Right. I, I mean, I knew that, but I just figured people that work in one of those kennels you'd would, think, would have but no. that kind of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, know? you'd think, but a, a lot of people don't. It's not common knowledge how how dog anatomy works versus not dog anatomy. <laughs> Damn it! And so yeah, that was that was, that happened last week. That was that was an interesting time. As of course, all the other dogs are like, "Hey, what you do? Oh, you actually did it! You got it in her. Good <laughs> job, man." Girl's like, "Oh my god, I haven't felt something in there in like ten years." <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh, damn. oh my god i just i that was that was that was a day yeah that mm -hmm. sounds like quite an experience man wow um but yeah so yeah that i i instead of you know old man boner and the mashed potatoes it was the green old, peas old dog boner and another old dog <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's terrible it would yeah but yeah, hey, um, by the way, I don't know if anyone... Has anybody here played uh, Firewatch? You mean Overwatch? Or no, Firewatch. 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 Uh, okay. yeah, there's too many games uh, now that have the word watch in them, apparently. I got confused a couple of times, too, whenever I was talking to a friend. I was like, Overwatch. No, sorry, I mean Firewatch. But yeah, no, Firewatch. Does anybody have any interest in playing this game? I do, but I'm broke. Honestly, I, I have no time, but it's, yeah, that could be a very possible summer game for me. It's one of those games that if you are able to get it, like definitely get it. I know it's, it's quite expensive. It's like $22, at least Canadian. And you're looking at about only maybe four hours of actual gameplay time. Really? It's that short? I thought it's it was longer that, than that. No, it's that short. Well, I, it took me that long to finish it. And that was kind of going fairly... Not not too fast and not too slow. Just kind of, you know, taking a little bit of time, but not dawdling too much. All right, thing. so I'll turn it into at least 10 hours. Yeah, there you go. So... This tree is different. Why is it different? I'm going to look at it from this side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a really, it's a beautiful game. And, you know, it's just, it's a very kind of different game for a first person perspective type of game. So. Yeah, definitely. it's actually kind of like a story narrative kind of game, right? It really is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it feels like you're really rewarded for kind of experiencing just going off into other parts and doing like a lot of exploration. And you're rewarded by hearing just different conversations that you have with the other person that's all the way over in the other kind of tower thing. So your only other colleague that's working with you, which you know, right. you, you don't really get to see anybody else in the game because, you know, you're just kind of on your own. But yeah, it's got a it's got a good like it's got a good story to it and everything. So definitely, if you get the chance to uh, play it, play it. I'm you know after having played that game, I'm definitely looking for kind of similar games. Like I know there's another one called Gone Home, which is fairly short, kind of in the same kind of you know you're just one person Ooh, gone kind of going home. around. I haven't actually played it, but I've heard absolutely great things. It's on my wish list. Yeah, At so least that's, I'm sure, pretty sure it is. Yeah, so that's definitely another one that probably the next one I'm gonna try to play. And um Yeah, I mean other than that, I think that's pretty much it. That's all I've been playing. It's just um Rocket League, Firewatch, and well, Heroes of the Storm with Dude Run. Which is yeah. fun. We honestly we have a blast playing that game. Like remember when we played a did we talk about this last episode? I can't remember, but when we when we played no. a Chogal 
we played Cho Gall before. We played Cho Gall like within the last week, and we couldn't record on Thursday. So right, we never heard of this. What the hell is this? So basically, Heroes what Cho Storm? Heroes of the Storm? So basically, what it is is sort of like a like a leagues of Le League of Legends. Oh, I could have sworn you the game of the name was Cho Gall. I I totally missed the fires. Oh yeah, or no, the, yeah. Uh, Heroes, Heroes of the Storm. Of, yeah, thing. Heroes of the Storm. So. Yeah, it's it basically is kind of just like a MOBA, so League of Legends type of game. Right. And the funny thing about Cho'Gal is that Cho'Gal is basically an a big ogre with two heads, and they both talk independently. So the cool thing about that character is that you can actually have two players controlling that one character. So you have the one character who moves around and does the melee stuff, and then the second player moves the other head that does like the spell casting and all that kind of stuff. So it was actually really fun just playing that with Dude Run. We're both just controlling one character, and it was a blast. Dude, yeah. we totally wrecked a lot of people. We wrecked a lot of character. people, and we got wrecked a few times. We did. Yeah, we did. And most of that was due to the driver running into shit, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Were you, was Chogol under the influence? Do you need therapy? <laughs> Chogol was under my influence when we died. Thank you very much. <laughs> Actually, Cho was under my because he's the one that moves. Gaul right. is the one that fires spells. Mm -hmm, exactly. I do not like being Cho. <laughs> it is. It, mm, I'm not used to moving, but it is funny to watch him ride a horse. Oh God! <laughs> it's not even riding a horse. He just picks up the horse by like picks it up sack style over his shoulder and then just runs faster with it. <laughs> Which is hilarious, yeah. Because I mean, you know, other people they just summon a horse and then they ride the horse. But yeah, he's just kind of carrying a horse, and for some reason, by him, you know, carrying extra weight just makes him go even faster. So it's as like ridiculous just, as that sounds, that that testosterone, hilarious. you know, <laughs> mother endangerment, you know, yeah. rush right there. Exactly. And I just want to save the horse really, really bad. <laughs> Dumb pony, we save you. <laughs> exactly. You're gonna give me better physics, or you're going to the glue factory, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my! Okay, well, that then. just happened. <laughs> That's amazing. It's ghost husband. It, it, it's <laughs> sorry. We edit that out. It's ghost. That's daily, <laughs> hourly, pretty much every ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I mean, I think other than that, you know, we haven't really been playing anything else at least i don't think i have really um i oh yeah we well i unlocked um freaking tracer from overwatch uh, yeah. here's a storm That's, she's actually really fun to play but she's kind of difficult to control but really really fun yeah so it's been pretty much my week in gaming i've heard she's like one of the more powerful characters mm -hmm. oh yeah right now definitely is Hopefully they won't nerf her too much, you know, in the future, but it's really fun to play her. I will admit I kind of lied in the last episode when we, or maybe it was two episodes ago, I don't even remember now, um, when we were asking what games you were most looking forward to, because I'm really actually, like I said, Elder Scrolls Online, and that's still true, um, but I'm also itching to get back to Elite Dangerous, and... Um, Guild Wars is looking pretty fun again now that they've done a whole shit ton of stuff with the uh, quarterly patch this April 19th. Um, yeah, it's nice. So, I know we're going to talk about that later. Or now, I don't know. <laughs> Improv! Yeah! Whoa, yeah, yeah, you guys go ahead and talk about all that. Alright, well, if... The rest of the world doesn't know Guild Wars 2 came out with a quarterly update the month of April. And um, basically, they attempted to fix everything they fucked up during their actual expansion that came out. And they did a pretty damn good job of it. Which is surprising, because most of the time they just fuck stuff up. But this time they did awesome. I can speak from the PvE side how awesome this changed, so. Hmm, I agree. Did you say PvP or PvE? E. You said PvE. Echo. Okay. 
Uh, that's so an important what, I mean, distinction. What are so, what are some of like the biggest changes that have happened that are like you know basically turned this game into like the expansion kind of being met to being like oh my god finally it's about time guys. Well, they changed the hot areas how um, their events are run. Now the events are the same, but they changed some of them to be more soloable than others and they change how loot is distributed from these events so eventually we, we got you know loot after the events yeah but now it's like loot explosion yeah okay loot awesome. explosion that's nice. one um they changed the daily system again they added some, they added dungeons, mini dungeons, jumping puzzles to the dailies. And when you complete your dailies, you get two gold. So just for doing your dailies, you get free money. So, yes. Free money. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, they changed the prices for leveling up scribing, which is the guild profession. Um... So people can actually level up scribing now without spending about... It's reasonably money. affordable now. Yeah. Cool. I think they also... Did they change any of the actual guild item costs or not? I can't remember. I don't know. Not that I've we've seen. They made them more common. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Loot drops more because with the Heart of Thorns zones didn't they make a lot of it so that uh the events weren't so fail-tacular including like one that had a problem with like being successfully completed and then it would like result in fail anyways because of some massive glitch i don't know tarir the tarir meta which is the um octobine um in this meta you had you had the gates were blocked by this giant eight armed plant of no vine and you had to destroy the vine doing various events on each gate northeast southwest eventually you can kill octo vine and if it would if you kill them sometimes you would get a meta fail Oh. Especially if it was within a like minute or thirty seconds of when it was at its fail point, anyway. So, yeah. So, but now they fixed it so he doesn't fail all the time, which is great because you get a whole lot of loot from the Terrier meta if it's successful. There's treasure chests galore underneath the city that you can get to when it's successful. Insufficient permissions. We as uh, players do like treasure chests. All these chests. Yes, and the keys for all these treasure chests drop at a more often rate. They they come as a event completion usually, but it was only every few events where you get keys. Now it's every single one you get three to five keys, so you probably will have an overabundance of keys just running in half an hour. I'm still telling just, you. They made some great quality of life inclusions in this patch. I'm still waiting for the key ring. I'm so tired of having eight bajillion keys. Dang. Sorry, so they did you just say like they don't have a key ring? They don't. Key, all the different keys for various events, whether it's like a quest or for, you know... A specific zone or part of your personal story or whatever it is um, keys are a common item in the game of various types and they are all considered individual items in your inventory so they actually take up inventory space yeah so oh, you what? you can have like an entire bag that. just made of keys that's insane yeah as like, I said it, this is 2016 like I know right Come on, they kind of worked on that in that, like, uh, some of the currencies and items that you 
used to carry, like, what did they do? Like, a year ago, I think they did that. Um, before Heart of Thorns launched, they condensed a few things into your wallet, and everybody's just, like, sitting there drooling, like, okay, when are you going to do this with keys? Like, we really, really want you to do it with keys. <laughs> yeah, that seems like something that, you know, they really should have been on quite a while ago. Because I mean, really, I'm in these kind of games, it's a feature. It's it's, <laughs> it's like now in the next expansion, you'll get a key ring, more keys than your body has room for. <laughs> Finally, because I mean, yeah, like inventory space is a precious commodity in these type of games. You know, you just you you need you need as much space as possible. So it's yeah, it's uh, crazy that uh, they don't have something like that. What other cool PVE things did they do? Oh, um, they kind of made dungeons useless back when Heart of Thorns launched. They like destroyed the loot tables. Um, uh, they like just you hardly got any dungeon tokens, which is like the entire point of dungeons. So like all of the cool dungeon specific loot you could buy or get through the dungeons was like pretty much not there. Um, so they fixed a lot of that again. Um, I don't know if they actually like brought it back to the way it normally was, but they got it close. They brought dungeons and mini dungeons, but dungeons period back into the daily rotation. Sometimes they're not there all the time. Um, and when they are on there, and you do the dungeon it's asking you to do, you get 100 extra of that dungeon currency on top of the 60 you get when you normally complete a path for the first time in the day, you will get an extra 100. So just for completing one path, you get 140. That's a lot of tokens. It is, yep. Um, I do it for... I, a raw was on it um, a couple days ago, and we did uh, path one, and I got the standard uh, chest with 20 in it at the end, and then I got the event completion one with 40 in it, and then I got the daily completion with 100 in it. It was beautiful. More tokens than your body has room for. <laughs> That's more you can get at the Chuck E. Cheese's. Maybe your body. Mine can hold enough for the world. No, that's your butt, not your body. <laughs> my butt is part of my body. Nope, nope. Yeah. They're they're completely no. segregated from each no. other. No. Your butt is a separate entity in this realm. No. I am a butt. I you are a butt. Well, well no is one this... is arguing with that point. There you go. Is this you just coming out and saying that you know you're an asshole? In no, just I am a lesser butt. words. I am a butt. Oh, I don't it. know. <laughs> oh, that sounds like you're saying you're an asshole. And everything into my asshole, but I am just a butt. That uh, sounds. Like I wear a human challenge. clothing. It's fine. Wait. So if we're personifying your butt and you say that um, you're giving everything to your asshole, does that mean you like have a separate asshole? Like he's this man named Fred next to you? I'm a butt. Not. I don't have two assholes. I am a butt with an asshole. He didn't say he had a Siamese sphincter. Yeah. But I mean, he could have this guy, Fred, that's just a real asshole right there sitting next to him. No. Yeah. I'm going to try and convolute this as hard as I can. You're not gonna. <laughs> so Anyways, Guild Wars time in the podcast for that. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. They, uh, speaking of dungeons, they also did fractals. Uh, they're back in the dailies. They changed difficulties again a little bit, so... Um, I think they've separated it out to four tiers now. Um, you get loot based upon that difficulty, and on top of that, um, if you, like, either it's based on your reward track or the daily, but either way, I know they were saying if you had to complete, like, a level 65 fractal, and you instead did a level 45, well, you'd get, like, the two tiers below 65 in reward loot, 
And then if you did the 65 or higher after that, you'd still get that third loot table for because you get all the loot at once for all the tiers and lower that you completed for your difficulty. So I'm not entirely sure how that works yet how, since I haven't tried it, but it sounds good and people are liking it from what I hear. That sounds like Santa delivering gifts under your Christmas tree, but then when you look up, there's more gifts in the tree for you. It, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's like, oh my gosh, there's stuff everywhere. And they... Perhaps one of the most exciting things, I think, in the whole patch is the rework of the specific cliffside fractal uh mini dungeon if you want to call it that um they removed the boss fight at the beginning because they realized it was just kind of an annoying waste of time um so there's a tiny little fight just to pick up the hammer at the bottom that takes just a few seconds um there's a way to pick up the hammer again later if you happen to you know send one of your party members off the cliff with the hammer whoopsie that used to kind of break the whole thing um but, and now you can actually, there's some sort of way to turn off a lot of the traps through the whole fractal. Yes, I don't know yes, how yes. exactly that works. There's, so one person would have to go through, at least, and, and then when they got up top, they could shut the traps off for everyone else. Oh. So, if you're scared, you are going to fall off the wind-blowing part <coughs> of that fractal. You could send some person up to shut off the chains and leave the hammer person at the bottom until the other person get up top, shut off the chains, then the hammer person can run through unobstructed all the way up top. So, so that means I'm going to be running up through the traps anyways because I'm a warrior and I have all of the stability and dodges. <laughs> they Got also it removed or streamlined some of the paths going up like there's one that's pretty much all spiked path, uh, traps going up right after the wind part and they removed it they so they shortened the paths going up that one that's pretty much all really narrow wooden planks there at the end where you have to do the uh, run through the hallway in between two um, symbols that whole um, area with really thin wooden planks has been removed. So, Sweet. just not as many people falling off the damn thing like me every single time. But yeah. Bye, bye, it's too bad there wasn't a way to, like, destroy the traps, too. That'd be pretty sweet if, like, oh, we don't have somebody that's beefcake enough to go to the front and hit the switch. Don't worry. I'll just throw a grenade into it, you know? That'd be amazing. Yeah. I mean, all of them are possible to get past with simple movement. So, timing and movement. I think yeah. they also changed, um, like, the health for some of the uh, seals you have to bust and how the uh, chest seal works so that it's not just standing in a very tiny corner where fire doesn't happen and then slamming the hammer all over, over and over again until it breaks. Yeah, I don't have the greatest movement. Uh, it's kind of more or less driving a tractor drunk in neutral. I want to see somebody do that. Not for a long time, because it'd be boring, but for like five <laughs> minutes, I'd be really entertained. Like, what's wrong with Ghost? Oh, he's stuck in the spike trap. Why is he spinning in circles? Not moving. Have you ever driven a tractor truck in neutral? No... I have All right. Back well, you don't know what he's going through then, so shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it appears he could be under the influence. No, he hasn't moved from that spot in the last 45 minutes. Influence of a statue. Right there. Staring at him. He's I'm not gonna moving. Be, I'm going to have to chalk it up to he's a blithering idiot. <laughs> God, I wish that was a crime we could charge people with. <laughs> God, I wish I could play MMORPGs and they'd give me coupons for discounted food. That'd be amazing. Oh my God, right? God, yes. 
The other big part to point out on Cliffside before we forget okay. is that the final boss fight, they actually change the mechanics as the difficulty goes up. Um, the way the boss actually functions, he get his moves are faster, his cooldowns are faster. Um, he actually gets some new moves as things uh, get more difficult, and they changed how that area up there functions. The cages torment now, and you actually have to be like target you have to be caught in like an area of effect attack to be put in the cages um so it's a lot less randomness and a lot more uh, mechanics to work with your party on that i think is a whole lot of cool i'm always about mechanic overhauls it also now takes only four hits to end the fight with the hammer instead of the five like just the, you know how it snuck an extra hit at the very end right the, yeah yeah that's been fixed it now takes four hits total to kill that boss cool with the hammer thing and then free the giant and whoop you do sounds pretty legendary speaking of legendary that totally wasn't an intentional segue not at all not that any of us are going to do it for the that's the short bow the the two name short bow wampa do wait i wrote it down for the sole purpose of saying it because it's way too much fun to say tuka and champawat good bless you tight <laughs> tuka and champawat tuka and champawat tuka and champawat this is the brand new legendary short bow that you can now make, and as far as I know, I believe Wardell might be going for it. Does it. I almost I can't even use a short bow with my characters, and I kind of want it for one purpose. You know what that purpose is? So you can say the name and link it all the time. No, because it's based off tigers. Tuka and Champawat <laughs> are apparently some sort of tiger names that are now entering the lore. Oh, I, I thought you were going to cast a voodoo curse over there, witch doctor. I went to a witch doctor, and he told me to say. Anyways, um, what else have they done for PVE? Oh, looking for group stuff. Got a total rework. It now includes um a whole shit ton of new categories, um, with searchable descriptions. Uh, yes. So you can. You can make categories for looking for specific achievements, achievement grinding, for doing personal stories, living stories, story journals. Uh, you can do mentoring of specific kinds of anything. Um, World v. World LFGs, raid LFGs. They even included a fucking role-playing category. So if you're a role-player... <laughs> I mean, I they pretty much... I, I'm not sure they didn't hit a category. I think there was like loot trains, and I know there's boss trains. And... There, there, the world boss train is on there, although it doesn't say train; it just says world bosses. True. Um, well, we all know they, it's a train. Um, each of the hot meta maps have their own section under open world. So instead of like every single map imaginable being under the open world, whether it be Silver Ways, Dragon Stand, all that. It's all separated, so you don't have like a whole mass that you have to scroll through to find the map that you want. Um, so that's amazing. They also can separate between raids and parties. Raids also, like I said, raids have their own section. So if you're doing veil, spirit veil, and whatever, there's a specific section and looking for group for that, which is so awesome. Also, com raid commanders can now enter and looking for group before they couldn't if they wanted to command you couldn't be in a raid at all if you wanted to send out a looking for group message they fix that but that's uh, a really bad and annoying bug glad that's not there anymore <laughs> yes yes uh other things that make that cool speaking of the party if you are in a raid especially if you were going to be Raiding in the raid instance, the the spirit veil and its other branch they got going on now. Raiders have their own lobby, much like the PvP lobby, on the very 
uh, southern end of Wines Arch. They can they have to be in a raid to go in, and it's just a place for them to chill, eat food, and there's an entrance to the raid instance right from there, so there's not an overload of people hanging out in Vern Break waiting to raid. Uh, teacher, I have a question. What's a train? Choo choo! Choo choo! Not that kind. It's basically the same thing, though. Have you ever heard of Thomas the Dank Engine? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just got the concept. Thank you for educating this incompetent mongoloid further. You're welcome. Bunga bunga. And level 80 boosts. Ah, uh, they did that We so need to well. talk about that because oh that God. is like money right there. So they're, rubbing they're my doing fingers a whole... together. They're doing a whole World of Warcraft thing where they let you boost all the way up to max? Except yep, it's free! Temporarily. Yep, temporarily. When you buy, uh, when you buy Heart of Thorns, you get a level 80 boost. But they do it so much better than World of Warcraft ever did. Okay, so tell me, what are the specifics for this? They'll boost you up temporarily to 80 if you are not currently 80. Like, for instance, yourself, Ryan, because you're, what, 40-something right now? I forget what level, but yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so you're going to get, well, you don't have the expansion, but anyway, you, you're you going to get a potion in the mail, and um, it will level you up, um, it'll give you the option, and it'll level you up to level 80, and immediately escort you to the Silver Waste, and you get to play with a level 80... Um, traits and skills and stuff that you can't use so it pretty much gives you full traits and everything and you get to play around with them temporarily on the silver waste map only the second you leave the silver waste map it goes away however it will remain you can use it until you consume it if you consume it at level 80 you get a whole shit ton of loot that'll make your level 80 character good so it'll give your a whole slew of level 80 gear um weapons uniforms stuff like that that you would want to use at level 80 and it would give it to you right like that okay so, so you for, won't have so, to buy it so let me see if i get this right so basically it's sort of like an unlimited potion that i can always kind of go back to that area so i can be level 80 but every time, whenever I want to go back to my old areas, whatever, I go back to being whatever level I was. Once Correct. I'm at level 80, though, if I consume that potion, then it goes away and I get, like, all this awesome bonus stuff. And you keep your level 80, of course. Right. Yes. Because you already reached level 80. Okay. Now, one of the cool things about this, too, is that it's a count bound. So it's in all of your inventories for each character. And you can do it to multiple characters simultaneously. So let's you say you've it. never gotten Guild Wars 2 at all. You go out, you go to Walmart right now, and you buy Heart of Thorns for $25 because I saw that and I took a picture of it and it's a thing and I laughed. Sorry, but I did. You do that, you <laughs> get the game going, you log in, you get this potion now because of the patch, and you make one character of every profession until you run out of character slots. You can then immediately boost them all to level 80 in the Silver Wastes and play as every different profession at level 80 with full gear and everything for as long as you want in the Silver Wastes. Interesting. And then eventually, if you choose to consume the potion, one of those characters keeps it and the other ones go back to being whatever they were. Hmm. Nice. So that might actually, well, I mean, you would have to own the expansion in, in order to get that potion, though. That's how they're doing it right now, but, I mean, much like Blizzard, I would not be surprised if that potion eventually shows up in the gem store. Right, yeah, I mean, it only makes sense for, you know, them try to monetize on that, just like everybody else. But, yeah, no, that is that is definitely interesting. It's a good way to, you know, get those people that, like me, that have always kind of lagged behind or to, um get up there and play with their friends for sure 
Do and I'm sure there's somebody out there going like, but I can level a character to 80 in six hours. I'm like, well, I mean, hey, at the very least, they're getting loot out of it if they just use it and quit whining and go away. Yep, and that's what so. I did because all my character slots are full of 80s. I, I, I can't, yeah. So I, I Clearly, just you just need to buy more character slots. You can have like 200 of them. No. Why would you want 200 of them? Uh, well, I mean, if you're a certain... If you're a certain I think it's actually IA, like 60, but still. If you're a uh, certain IA member, you know, who's known as a alcoholic, <laughs> um, then, you know, like, I mean, <laughs> then, you know, 200 character slots sounds like a fabulous idea. But after a while, you'd run out of ideas, so I think, like, nine would be, just, like, one for each class would be enough. Gives you a bit to try. Well, I've played one of each class. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've played every single one. The only one I only I have two that are currently level eighty, and I don't have enough slots to make another one. Uh, Warrior and NG. I think the only two that I never played all the way through. We warriors are a rare breed. I'm still playing. Uh, what is it called? Like a thief. Yeah, you're yeah, a thiefy. Thiefies yeah. are fun. Yeah. Doing like, thiefy like things. Thiefies. All the thiefy. thiefy things. That's pretty fun. Okay, so that only covers like a third of that patch, and that's a huge amount of material to digest. I think I literally counted it at through a tool. Don't worry, I didn't try to count it as like 17,850-some words in that patch. So I say wow. we take a break. And we look at some other weird things that we've seen in the news. Yeah, I mean, like, we can always come back to it even on, like, a different podcast, you know, once you guys have experienced a bit more of this oh, yes. content as well. So mm. always come back I, to it. I, I need to be doing a lot of PvP for a guild hall right now, so if you give me a week, I can go uh, This is Brian's go through quiet it. way of saying, Shro, you're not allowed to gush about World v. World for the next four hours. Yeah, well, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I do have to do World versus World soon for for my legendary and for um, the guild hall um i'm kind of going Wait, you're like, doing a legendary now yes what? What? twilight you're me you can craft I'm, I'm working on crafting the precursor and i need the uh, memory whatever the the currency that the world versus world currently drops i need those Okay. Yes. So I will work through the PvP stuff and the world versus world stuff on my own whenever I want. Still can't world versus world with you guys. Maybe someday. Oh, but yes. Hey, one of those things, one day it might happen. We might even be allies. In fact, first well, we, we gotta get allies. you back into the game, Shro. I can be a cheerleader. No, we gotta get you back in the game. <laughs> it's pretty much not happening until finals are over, but that's like mid-May, so it's sooner than I want it to be. Okay. Wait, want it to be? Um, yeah, there's the part where I'm, like, trying to not fail classes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hey, I actually wanted to bring something up, too, that kind of happened this week. Uh, now, I, I don't know how familiar you guys are with ordering games off of it. Amazon and stuff like that because I mean since for the most part we're PC gamers we tend to purchase them on Steam or just digitally other places but Amazon did something really weird uh, to the point where like all of their games basically in order for you to be able to purchase them you actually have to be subscribed to their premium service so you have to be subscribed to Amazon Prime oh fuck that like how messed up is that like I I was trying to buy me again so in order for you to purchase a video game from Amazon, whether it be like on the 360, sorry, on the Xbox and the PlayStation 4, um, you have to be subscribed to their premium service, which is Amazon what? Prime. And you're paying okay, about, I thought I heard you right. Yeah, you're Damn. paying about like what? Like, I don't know, like 70 something dollars a year to be subscribed. I think that's to $99 a year here. It might have gone up. Who knows, man? But yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? Like there is a workaround to this but it's like you could purchase it from 
Amazon, but from a different vendor within Amazon. And yeah, then you can put, I mean, other than that, it's like, dude, really? Like, why like are they, you... wait, are they offering like downloads of games or like a box copy? No, it's like the box copy. I like, feel I, like I, that's illegal. It's like, I get it that you're trying to add more value to your prime service, but I don't feel like this is really the way to go. Especially since people fucking hump the hell out of Prime to begin with. Mm -hmm. I know people that are like, I've run out of stupid stuff to buy with Amazon, but I still keep Prime just for when I feel like I need cereal at like a fast pace. <laughs> like, did you just say cereal? Yeah, I get my cereal through Amazon. That's, an, that's what? crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, so that happened like sometime this week, which I, I'm still honestly trying to wrap my head around that. Just yeah yeah wow so i you know who knows what will happen maybe they'll kind of be like oh you know what this was a bad idea let's just backpedal on that and no we're good we're good guys you guys don't need to sign up to prime but yeah it just it really does seem like it's just a way of them to add more value to their prime service it just it seems really backwards yeah i'd have to agree with that Yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't think I've really seen anything new as far as gaming news. Well, I mean, I could gush about Night in the Woods some more. There was, was there any news probably. about that? Well, so they were at PAX East, um, and they played a chunk of their demo that people have been playing for the last, like, year. Um, <laughs> and I think it's their most recent version of the demo too so it had some of the newer newer mechanics and graphics to it um but they were playing it and it's on twitch um the indie dot xsplit day two if you fast forward to like five hours and 22 minutes um it's their little half hour spot Ooh, excuse me spotlight um talking about the game as they play it and i mean it still looks fantabulous i'm super excited about it oh. Huh. Oh. did you finish that for your channel yet did i not yeah i finished last constellation yeah okay i'll have to look for the ending on that i'm i followed it up was... to four and then i had like a project come up <laughs> it's kind of disappointing because the last episode was so short apparently i just got to the ending and i didn't know it yeah, I think you were really close. Yeah. It was a fun game. Very, very pretty art style. Loved it. Yeah, so nice. That's, Animal. That sounds interesting. Animals in the woods. Speaking, Speaking of, of videos, oh. Oh. Uh, Brian and Shro were in a video for my channel. Oh, yeah. True. Yes. That was, yeah, that was super fun. Oh, oh hell yeah. Pretty great video. Yeah. You should we totally killed dude out only there, like viewers. six times. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. We played uh Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. It's a bomb defusal party game where the player has the bomb in front of them, but other people in the game have the manual and they're not allowed to look at each at each other's thing. So you've got to communicate in a very weird way and it 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 led it led to some hilarious results, and I died a few times. I got called a few times as well, but it was fun. <laughs> we discovered dude can't follow directions about who's on first. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck I had to do. You just rattled off words that I could have pressed and didn't say like, okay, press the first one that pops up. You just said, okay, press one of these. And then I did, and then it didn't work. Yeah, I feel like that was, you know, kind of a 50-50 kind of error on everyone's part there. Mm. So, hey, it happens, you know, no harm done. You just blew up a few times. Yeah, I just, I just died. Mm -hmm. Your your so body parts no were just enough. atomized and, and then splattered across And then we put you back together, brought walls. you back to life, and then just did that all over again to you. Necromancy. Oh, yes. shit. It's like someone <laughs> rewinding a VCR back and forth and back and forth. We've <laughs> <laughs> discovered time travel. Time travel. The Sands of Time. Uh, that game. That was a great game. game. I also great. have to sidetrack to 
Um, a completely different topic. My biochemistry class, which is normally very serious, talks about a lot of, you know, strange protein interactions and molecules being manipulated and changed. And we were talking about epigenetics, which is modifying genome expression, or rather your how your DNA is read and whether it is red or not in certain places without actually changing your DNA. No. Is how that works. Um, it uses other molecules to basically block the DNA, so it's kind of like shielded, so it can't be red. Um, and that's, yeah, it, that's how. But um, a lot of epigenetics is how you can change the gen sort of change the genetics of a living organism already. Um, which, like, obviously if something's, you know, an organism and living and functioning already, you don't normally get to change its genetics by today's technology standards. But epigenetics, being the weird chemistry that it is, does get manipulated a little bit in, like, like another layer of biology. point in all of this is that in the middle of my lecture last class, my super serial biochem professor said, Have you licked your rat pups today? And all of us were very confused because she was talking about the fact that a mother rat will lick her new pups and it, if she nurtures them well, it actually changes the epigenetic expression of their DNA. Not that she knows that it's doing that, it's just, you know, nature's cool like that. And they grow up to be better adults um, because they're calmer and more focused because they were nurtured. And if you take that away, this got crazier because she not only said this, but she then went to her computer and pulled up an... A God damn it, phone, I said computer again. <sighs> Phone just turned on, like, Siri kind of thing, going like, Hey, what do you want? I, I like how you just have place. that set up. To when you, Whenever you say computer, your phone lights up. Pretty much, yeah. I was supposed to change that, and it didn't happen. Anyways, what I was trying to say is, she went to her computer. It, see, it did it again. All I have to do <laughs> is say computer. God damn it. Turn that off. <sighs> Now my phone's interpreting all of these things as I say it, so it's like, see, it did it again, god damn it, isn't now what is in the Google search bar. <laughs> Anyways, she goes to her laptop and punches in a web address where you can actually go to the University of Utah's website on epigenetics and play a software, like, clicker game app about licking your rats. I couldn't contain it. What? I fucking lost it. Uh, the more you know? Yeah, it, it was it was my weird cross of like this is gaming going into teaching. But it's so cringeworthy and awkward. Cuz it's a clicker app about licking rats. What? And the mouse is even like a little tongue. <laughs> That's weird. That's so weird. I can't handle it. Uh, that's right up there with finding porn on Wikipedia. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's a good time to uh, at least take some interesting snippets from the Guild Wars 2 patch and then maybe call it a night. Yeah, we covered. We're we're running on the uh, one hour mark. Soon. Right. Um. I mean, I want to point that you out. Guys wanted to to talk about before we we call it a day. Well, I'm just gonna without actually going into details. I'm gonna say that the major changes in PvP for Guild Wars 2's patch. Um. A lot of the main maps, and even some of the not main maps for PvP, 
got some pretty significant mechanic overhauls to the point where um, Spirit Watch and Skyhammer are actually new beta maps uh, that they're trying out right now. So if you don't even care about what they the details are, I'll talk about it later. Um, go ahead and try to play that one now and see what they changed. Uh, some interesting quality of life changes, and without going into all of the amazing things that happened in World v. World, um, the biggest news is something that is being called... <coughs> yes, it's being called... <coughs> Dying Shro. Uh, it's being called World Linking, and they're basically pairing up... Uh, High tier populated worlds with low tier not so populated worlds and making them allies. And we don't know if that's going to be like a weekly change or semi regular change. Um, I mean, it could even be permanent, but I don't, based on the wording around all that, I don't think it's going to be permanent. But for example, many of us are Ford Aspenwood players and we are currently paired with a Borlius Pat or Borlius Pass. I say that wrong all the time. Um, and so that's, you know, it's changing the number of worlds for World vs. World from 24, where a lot of the bottom tier worlds pretty much didn't have a World vs. World game mode to play in because there was so little population that there was nothing going on because it's supposed to be huge, you know, 50-man teams plus on all over the maps. Um, so it, it's called that down to half that size. So you only have 12 worlds now. So there's a lot more population going on. And it also mixes things up because now you're introducing uh, player bases with um, often different styles, which could be good, could be bad, depending on who's paired with who. Um different styles of play because world versus world is such a uniquely dynamic element to not only guild wars but just mmos in general at least for now there are a few games that are coming out to try and steal that banner okay so i wanted to bring that up because that's already live right now and stuff's going on and i'm hearing good things from my world versus world friends so feel free to please log in and try it and I will dig deep into the world versus world and some of the PvP map changes. Um, two, three days from now, because we're really late recording this podcast, and I'm just gonna <laughs> yeah. say it like it is. Pretty much, yeah. We've had some, um, we've had some setbacks, but yeah, I feel like there's definitely, from the sounds of it, there's still a lot of material that's happening in this patch. So, it will, as I said before, you know, we'll definitely be getting back to a bunch of this stuff. Once you guys stability, oh my god, stability. That's my teaser right there. Stability changes. Oh. Fuck yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, fuck so, yes. So we'll get back to it next week. And um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, is there last call for anything else though? Anything else happening? You know, website wise, community wise. I'm gonna apologize on the website, right? And my schooling is pretty much killing me. So. I, I've stalled out on working on the website, but a uh, couple weeks, and I'll have that finished as soon as finals are over. In fact, good news, it'll probably be before finals are over, because the two classes I'm in right now don't really actually have a final. Oh, all the, right. My laboratory's final is a pizza party, and my actual lectures final is not an exam but just a project presentation man i wish one of my finals would have been a pizza party it sounds amazing yeah i was kind of surprised when i realized that halfway through the semester and i read that on the curriculum i'm like wait a minute i don't remember reading that <laughs> damn it, people are making me hungry i actually had pizza today so it's it was a pretty good day <laughs> it's a pretty good day all right, guys. So, yeah. So thank you once again for being here. Uh, we'll be back shortly, you know, in a couple of days. And until then, thank you so then. much, Tro, Dude Run, Fire Tits McGee, Ghost of the 13th for being here. Uh, no. You know, sure, whatever. 
We'll see you again. <laughs> we'll see you again next time. This is oh, the no. worst drinking game ever. He actually didn't say awesome that much Fuck. this time. Oh, I'll say awesome okay. things and make him say awesome. All right, here we go. Awesome, 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 awesome. No, no, oh my god, my liver. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my pancreas. <laughs> All right, guys. My until, squiggly next, squish. <laughs> until next week, we are the Insomniacs Anonymous, and we are out. Wait, where can we find Stay everybody? awake. Uh, stay sleeping. Where can Not. we find everybody? Well you, can, well, you know, you can find everyone online. Dude Run, we can, where can we find you? Nowhere. I, in, the, in the video description or SoundCloud description, because I'm too lazy to say it anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds you good. brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye bye. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>